everybody, this is Samantha with the DevOps Library. We're glad you found yourself here. Today I'd like to welcome you to our new DevOps for Beginners course. This course is going to be a little bit different from our normal videos. We're going to use a story to illustrate how to solve real-world problems using DevOps tooling and concepts. Before we begin, we'd like to give a quick shout out to Datadog for sponsoring this video. With their help, we're able to keep our videos free for you, and we even use them personally for our own servers. Plus, by using Datadog's cloud-scale monitoring, you can easily track your dynamic infrastructure. If you haven't tried them out, visit dtdg.co slash devops library. You'll even get a 14-day free trial. All right, now back to our lesson. Imagine you've just started working for a web-based company that's desperately trying to scale. We're going to start out with the basics, but by the end of this course, you'll be ready to deploy, monitor, and scale applications in the real world. All right, let's get started. Imagine you've spent most of the day so far just getting to know the team. Kevin, one of the guys from the build team, volunteers to teach you and Ron how to set up the Montonomy web app. Well, as soon as he finishes an email to QA about last night's release, that is. Suddenly, everything changes. Your boss, Steve, begins shouting across the room, Oh my god, check the homepage. Please check the homepage. Before you've even opened up your browser, three people have already started screaming, 408! Seconds later, the roar has died down as everyone scrambles to figure out what's causing the website to time out. An unspoken awareness of thousands of angry customers falls over you. You quickly SSH into one of the web servers and, after a few dead ends, decide to run top. Good God, the server's CPU is pegged at 100%. Quickly, you run over to let Steve know. Without even saying a word, though, the look of sadness and fear on his face tells you the solution isn't going to be easy. Using sorcery, or as Steve calls it, Pearl, the status of each web server pops up on the screen. Every single one is maxed out. Steve then proceeds to address the team. I need two more web servers ASAP. Justin, Chris, move as fast as you can, and can someone look into why we're being hit so hard? Okay, so this seems like a pretty easy fix, right? But a few minutes later, it dawns on you why everyone is still panicking. The servers are being configured by hand. Okay, so flash forward to day two. Things have been going quite a bit better. The website's up, and even Justin brought in donuts. Steve is currently out explaining to the marketing team why sending a 50% off coupon to 1.5 million members without a heads up was a bad idea. And Kevin is finally going to show you and Ron how to set up the company's app. Okay, so the first thing you guys need to do is to clone our main app repository, which is hosted on GitHub. You're both pretty comfortable with Git, right? You and Ron both not, although you suspect Ron is lying. Awesome, Kevin says. Well, we only need two files from the repo, the DevOps demo.sql script, which we'll use to set up the database, and the DevOps demo.tar.gz file, which goes on the web server. Before Kevin can continue, Ron stands up and says, all right, I get it, and wanders off. Kevin sighs and then says, he doesn't get it. He has never gotten it. Of everyone, he should definitely be listening. Let's put it this way. He's like a human chaos monkey. Uncomfortable and unsure of what to say next, you ask what you can do now. Kevin, feeling a little bit bad, says, I'm sorry, I guess he's not that bad. Anyway, log into AWS with the creds I emailed you earlier. I went ahead and already spun up two Ubuntu 14.04 instances. We're going to use one as a MySQL server for the Monotonomy backend, and the second for the front end. After SSHing into both servers, Kevin has you pull up an Evernote with each of the steps listed. All right, so when you're doing these steps, you got to make sure you're running as root. I also like to do an apt-get update before doing anything else. Now install MySQL. Type apt-get install MySQL server. Before you can continue, MySQL pops up asking for a password. Kevin says, at this point, you'll want to use our standard password or you'll have to edit the SQL script. Let me find it real quick. Kevin then opens up KeyPass on his laptop and after a minute or two tells you to type in DevPass. All right, perfect, Kevin says. Now you just need to run a few lines to configure MySQL. Mm, they're pretty long. Do you want me to type them real quick? You nod. So Kevin types MySQL U root PDev pass E create database DevOps DB. All right, so that line creates the database. Now we just need to upload the SQL script from the repo and run it. Give me a second. 
Kevin SCPs the SQL script to the server. Then he runs MySQL, uroot, pdev pass, devops db, devops, demo, dot SQL. All right, we're just about set on this server, but you still need to set the bind address to allow any host. Otherwise, the web server isn't going to be able to connect. Are you pretty familiar with MySQL? You nod and pull up Etsy, MySQL, my.cnf in Vim. After commenting out the bind address, you run service, MySQL, restart to apply the changes. Kevin smiles and looks relieved, and then he says, Ah, oh, thank the gods, you don't use Nano. I knew we hired the right person. You don't mention it, but you were actually using Nano up until a few months ago, until after you spent a day playing Vim Adventures. Finally, Kevin says, now on to the last part. We still need to set up the web server, and unfortunately I have a meeting with Todd I need to go to. I'm trying to get him on board with using Jenkins, but he's been pretty much against changing anything. If you have the time, just follow the rest of the Evernote and let me know later if you have any questions. Oh, yeah, make sure you note down the IP address of the SQL server. You're going to need it for the config.ini file on the app. Kevin then walks off, and for the first time today, you're on your own. You pull up Evernote alongside the web server terminal, and you start running through the steps. First, do an apt-get update, then run apt-get install Apache 2 PHP 5 PHP 5 MySQL. Second, delete everything from var www html. Third, upload the DevOps demo 1.0.tar.gz file to the server, and once it finishes, extract the files to var www html. Fourth, open up a web browser and go to the public IP of the server. Verify that the page does come up. After opening up the page, you notice that it does come up, however the database connection fails. Unfortunately, that's the last step in the Evernote. Thankfully, Max doesn't look too busy, so you go ahead and ask him for help. Hey Max, can you help me with this? Ah, well we really need to update that guide. You're good to go on the infrastructure part, but you still need to set the config variables. Open up var www.html config.ini. Replace DB host with the IP of whatever database you set up. SQL user with root and SQL password with dev pass, unless Kevin had you use something else. For the SQL DB name, set it to DevOps DB. Oh, okay, well what do I use for ENV, you ask Max. Uh, make sure you use dev, that way the app doesn't point to any of our production stuff. And that should be it, just refresh the page to make sure. You sigh a breath of relief. Success! Thanks to Max and Kevin's help, you've just learned how to set up the app. While we know setting the app up by hand was painful, don't worry, in the next episode we're going to automate the process. I know this style is quite a bit different from what we normally do, so let us know in the comments if you like the real world scenario or if you would just prefer us to focus on our normal type of videos. And if you have a real world problem you'd like us to address in the story, let us know and we'll do our best to add it. As always, if you like our videos, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you love our videos so much that you're willing to support us, just head to patreon.com slash DevOps library. We'll even add you to our high scores list at the end of each video. As always, thanks again for watching. We look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>